Hey guys, so this one's going to be about Bob Weir. Um, Bob Weir is an amazing rhythm guitar player. If you listen to any of his songs, I assure you, you just if you listen closely, sometimes he's kind of lower in the mix, but he sounds amazing and he's just doing some really complicated stuff sometimes. And I'm going to show you how to sound similar to him and play similar to him as well. I made a Jerry Garcia video um, earlier. Uh, check that out and if you want, just, you know, have a look and see what you think. But for now, we're going to talk about Bob Weir's. So, right now, I'm plugged into an AC-15, and I'm using a Telecaster. He, Bob never really used any single coil guitars. He used humbuckers, you know, Gibsons, uh, with the two fat you know, pickups right there. But this one, uh, I'll do my best to, you know, get it across through the Telecaster. So, with Bob Weir... For rhythm guitar players during the 60s and the 70s, you know, everybody was just doing your basic, you know, G, G, E. And Bob Weir, if you just, if you've seen his movie, the other one about him, he talks about how he does his playing, trying to copy a lot of the piano jazz players, always did different voicings. So, was Bob Weir, for example, in uh, Dark Star, if you look up chords, tabs, um, they'll usually tell you, you know, Dark Star is A, G, G, A, but if you actually listen to the song, it doesn't sound like he's just playing A, A, G, G, A, he's doing something that's, you know, like, <clears throat> sorry. And it is still in the key of A. If you have a friend play, just play this over you, and you try playing, you know, A major, mix, A mixolydian, and it sounds, you know, you're just like, oh, I'm just creating Dark Star, you know. Um, so if you listen to songs like Me and Bobby McGee um, from the Skull and Roses live album that came out, if you hear, he uses, you know, he uses the middle position a lot as well as Jerry, just like Jerry Garcia. Um, and his strumming is very loose, and he kind of relies on the the deep and dark, you know, powerful sound of humbuckers to really, you know, bring out his chords. Like for me and Bobby McGee, he's he, he's just you can hear how um, smooth he's strumming, but the sound is really thick. I'm gonna try, you know, just use this Telecaster. <laughs> He'll do stuff like that, and I'm um, playing in the band. When they start getting really deep into the jam, Bob is really, you know, just jumping in the D uh, major part, and he's doing a lot of inversions. So I would suggest if you want to play just like him, uh, you should learn some inversions. You learn the cage system. The cage system is really important. If you don't know what that is, just look it up. Um, the cage system really introduces a lot of people. There's, it's a big controversy, but I, I say go for the cage system. Everybody just likes to dismiss it, but it is a really useful tool. You can play the D here, D here. stretching it but it just helps you you know learn and for Scarlet Begonias he doesn't even just use inversions he used octaves um, for the intro when Jerry's just playing Bob Weir is doing and you know who would have thought of that who would actually think of doing stuff like that? You know, it's amazing. Um, for, I believe, he's playing the intro to Terrapin Station. I don't actually know how to play that well. And then he does. You know, I can't do it that well, but you know, he does it really good. Um, what other songs? Um, 
Oh, and his songs like, what's it called? Passenger, he does uh, stuff like. You know, it's great and it's just, wow, you know, this is supposed to sound like an A, but he does it all the way here, except he plays this kind of inversion. You know, that's why I say you should learn the K system because they really show you how he, you know, messes with chords. Um, in the late 80s, he didn't, you know, use two pickups anymore. He was using kind of like a Strat, he was using a slide guitar. Um, well, not slide guitar, but he was using a slide. But, you know, for Bob Weir to sound like him, you really have to learn on your chords, work on chords. Um, Really, the sound that he usually get comes from the way he strums very loosely, but the, the relying on you know the power of the guitar, the pickups, and to make his sound really get out there and um, cut through the mix and add you know a lot of depth to the song. Um, even for his his uh, easier songs like um, well, not easy, but you know, the beginner songs that they, they did in the very beginning on the first Grateful Dead album, he was doing a lot of, um, you know, rock and roll. Like, you know, the, um, I forgot the name of the song, but you know. You know that song? Um, beat, it, beat It Down the Line. I think that's what it's, what it's called. And he does a lot of that in uh, one more uh, one more Saturday night. Um, he's doing while Jerry's going. And then when they hit the verse, well, the chorus, one more Saturday night, Jer um, uh, Bob Weir's. was a great guitarist learns uh, also learned uh, seventh chords just add a lot of chords to your um sorry I got a bite in my leg and I've been scratching it this whole video but anyways add a lot of uh, chords to your guitar playing and you'll sound just like him um, learn how to use them learn how to if you hear a song and you're just playing uh, you know Learn how to make it sound like add a twist at uh, octaves. Do. do the stuff that's like you've never seen a rhythm guitar player ever do, but that will make you really stand out, and that's what made him really stand out. And that's all I really have to say. If you guys have any comments or questions or suggestions or if you have any other tips to play just like Bob Weir then go ahead and leave it in the comment sections for everyone else to see thank you I hope you guys actually learned something from this um, see you guys some other day